Hare Krishna. Omaikyana Timanda Sians Nans Nans Lakan Sakswan Militam Yinatas Mani Sigura Venama Nama Vishnu Padai Krishna Pastaya Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Sarasvata Devi Gaurabhani Prajavani Nirvishesha Sanyavada Paskatyai Desotarni So we will today first discuss Mantra 8, which is the last ma last mantra of a section of four verses, which explains how to develop spiritual vision. And this Mantra 8 addresses uh, the Absolute Truth as a person with transcendental qualities. And in the paragraphs of the purport, Srila Prabhupada describes or discusses uh, he discusses each of these qualities in his paragraphs. So I will read the verse first and then we will discuss. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sapaya Shakshutam Akayam av Avrinam Asnaviram Sudam Apapavidam Kavirmanisi Paribhu Svayambhu Yatta tatya turitam yadadakshasvatibhya samabhya Now the word for word translation Saha, that person, Paryagat, must know in fact Sukram, the omnipotent, Akayam, unembodied Avrinam without reproach, Asnabiram without veins, Sudam antiseptic, Apapavidam prophylactic, Kavihi omniscient, Manisi philosopher, Paribu the greatest of all, Svayambu self sufficient, Yata tat Yata, just in pursuance of achtan, desirable, vyadadat, awards, sasvatibya, immemorial, samabya, time. Translation. Such a person must practically know the greatest of all, the personality of Godhead, who is unembodied, Omniscient, beyond reproach, without pains, and pure, pure and contaminated. The self-sufficient philosopher who has been fulfilling everyone's desire since time immemorial. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada describes each of these qualities that are uh, so we will read the first part, the introduction. That uh, here is a description of the transcendental and eternal form of the absolute personality of Godhead, the supreme Lord, is not formless. He has his own transcendental form, which is not at all similar to the forms of the mundane world. The forms of the living entities in this world are embodied in material nature, and they work like any material machine. The anatomy of a material body must have a me mechanical construction with veins and so forth. But the transcendental body of the Supreme Lord has nothing like veins. 
it is clearly stated here that he is an unembodied, which means that there is no difference between his body and his soul. Nor is he forced to accept a body according to the laws of nature, as we are. As we are. In, in immater immaterially conditioned life, the soul is different from the gross embodiment and subtle mind. For the Supreme Lord, however, there is never any such difference between him and his body and his mind. His complete is a complete whole, and his mind, his body, and himself are all the same. So the Lord's body is spiritual. Krishna is his body. <laughs> There is no difference <laughs> that, um, that in the material world there is a difference between our real self and the subtle and the gross body. That uh, Krishna also spoke about this in Bhagavad Gita. If we go back to Bhagavad Gita, then we have the fourth chapter. Hmm. So there, Krishna. Hmm. Yeah. Krishna says, Bauni me via titani, chanmani, stava sarina, tanyam veda sarvani, natvam veti prantava. Supreme Personality of God said, Many, many births, both you and I have passed, but I ca can remember them all. But you cannot, O subduer of the enemy. So Arjun con could not remember his previous births because he change his body, but Krishna does not change his body. Therefore, there is no forgetfulness. That indicates, yes, uh, a different body. And in the Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada explains that it's like a Madhurya stone, that Krishna appears in many forms, many expansions. But then Krishna becomes more precisely says, Ayopi son of Yayatma, Bhutnam is for Opi son, Pagatim son of Adistaya, Sambhavan Atma Maya. Although I'm unborn, and my transcendental body never deteriorates. See it? It never changes. Always the same. And although I'm the Lord of all living entities, I appear in every millennium in my transcendental form. So in this verse, the, so all these qualities are discussed of the Absolute Truth, yes, yeah. Mantra 8. So this is the section we are discussing and we were reading number 8. The vision developed further and directed to Ishvara helps us to understand him. So we have heard before that uh, that we, we this spiritual vision develops from the Karnishta to the Matyam to the Uttamadikar, Uttamadikar who sees all things, events and people with equanimity, that uh, he sees Krishna everywhere, that uh, he sees everything as Krishna's energy in this world, that uh, and it that if this vision develops further, 
further means one develops love for Krishna then one can understand Krishna and so here we have in this mantra 8 we have all these qualities described and they are here on the screen in Sanskrit that uh, Akayam unembodied and he has not a body like us and Anashviram without veins it's not a biological construction his body like ours Ishukram is omnipotent Nayata Tatyato Yachtan he fulfills is a fulfiller of desires of all living entities and Paribu is supreme Svayambu self-sufficient Sudam antiseptic and Apapa Vidam prophylactic we will explain that that's very interesting what is mentioned here so Natasya Pratimasti this from the Svetar 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 Upanishad no one can grasp him above, across, or in the middle. His name is Great Glory. Tasya Pratim. Baladev Vidyabhunshan translates, Nothing can compare with the transcendental form of the personality of God. So his transcendental form is unique. No. That, uh, yeah. It, in this verse, so all these qualities are given that, uh, and that's difficult to understand for us. That we have also heard contrary momentum. Contrary statements before that uh, that is swifter than the wind, than the mind, that uh, is inside and outside everything. So all, how to understand these things that. Uh, this is from logic Nyaya. We need a third statement to resolve two contra contradictory statements. Like Ravi, he does not eat during the day. But Ravi's weight is increasing. So we need a first, a third statement to qualify that. And that's called Artapati. A third statement is needed to resolve the first two seemingly contradictory statements. So the Artapati is Rava eats secretly at night. <laughs> that, uh, so, like, God has no form, Arupya. God has many forms. Uropia. How can we understand that? What is the Artapati? God has no material form, but has many spiritual forms. That, uh, so that explains the, the, the previous two statements. That, uh, in the Svetas Svetas Vatar Upanishad is said Apani Pado Javano Kahita Pasyati Asakshana Shindyakana He has no eyes but he sees. How is that? Artapati has, he has spiritual eyes. Hmm. So the word body kaya as connotations that don't apply to the lord's form because is he is separate from the real person 
the soul in our case the body is different from the real person the soul and our body we have to give up in some time in due times so we tend to the greater soul by st stimulating bodily desires that is sense gratification that's a problem the body is a soul of uh, is a product of the soul's past karma so our body is different than krishna's body that uh, no the the loose the last two qualities sudam So in 10, 33, 39, that, uh, that Prabhupada spent a whole paragraph on this, the purport, that, uh, so in Srimad Bhagavatam, if we go to the third canto, text, Chapter 33, that's the chapter of the Rasa Dance. 33, the Rasa Dance, text 39. That's I read the translation. Anyone who faithfully hears or describes the Lord's playful affairs of the young gopis of Vindavan will attain the Lord's pure devotional service. Thus he will quickly become sober and conquer lust, the disease of the heart. That, uh, I read also the purport. The extraordinary power of the Lord's con of Lord Krishna's conjugal pastimes is clearly revealed here. Qualitatively, the Lord's spiritual loving pastimes are the diametric opposite of material lusty affairs, so much so that simply by hearing about the Lord's pastimes, the devotee conquers sex desire. By reading pornographic literature or hearing about material rom romance, we certainly do not conquer sex desire, but rather increase our lust. But Hearing or reading about the Lord's conjugal affairs has exactly the opposite effect because they are the opposite nature being purely spiritual. Therefore it is by the causeless mercy of Lord Krishna that he exhibits his Rasa Lila within this world. If we become attached to this narration we will experience the bliss of spiritual love and thus reject the per perverted reflection of that love which is called lust. As nicely put by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, Param Dristvani Vartati. Once having directly experienced the Supreme, one will not return to material pleasures. So this is also in summary mentioned in the Krishna book. And after the Krishna book came out, devotees in the Los Angeles temple, they decided to come together once a week to discuss the dancing of Krishna with the gopis. And some had a peacock feather with them. And <laughs> anyway, they, when Prabhupada heard this, he, he became very angry. He said, They will not become purified, they will become putrefied. <laughs> that, so you must be qualified to hear these pastimes. That, uh, I think. Before we said that a couple was asking Prabhupada to speak about the Ra Rasa Lila, and Prabhupada said, No, you must be qualified to hear it. But they insisted, and they said, Maybe you are qualified to hear about it, but I'm not qualified to speak about it. So when one has surpassed liberation and one comes to the level of Raganuga Bhakta, Bhakti, which should only be practiced after liberation, the heart is pure. And then only one can engage in hearing and discussing the gopis. Before, if your heart is full of lust and you hear about the gopis, it will be very offensive. 
and it will have the opposite effect. But Krishna is Sudam. Sudam, that's the point. Is pure. And when we have contact with the pure, then we become purified. We chant the holy name, Krishna is the holy name, and Krishna is pure. And therefore, by chanting the holy name, we become purified. But the holy name manifests only his full potency of, of, perfect, of purification for us if we have the appropriate mood of surrender and, of, and avoid the ten offenses and, and are respectful for devotees, respectful the, for the, the holy name, respectful for, for, for the scriptures. That, uh, so that is required. That, uh, so Krishna will purify us. That, uh, but of course, then we have uh, a few other uh, qualities, and that is Krishna is pure, apa, that Sudam, but he is also apapa vidam at the end. That uh, Sudam and Apapa Vidam. Sudam, Shilapapa translates as antiseptic, and Sudam as prophylactic. So, what is that? How do we purify our subtle body? Krishna says, Man Mana. Think of me. So, if, if, if because the purpose is to go to get liberation and then develop love of God. So how are we going going to become liberated? We have, from what uh, do we need to become liberated? From the subtle body, making spiritual advancement means purifying the subtle body. So. The subtle body has three aspects, mind, intelligence, false ego. So how are we going, are we going to purify the mind? The, the answer of Krishna is we purify the mind by man mana, hearing about Krishna, thinking of, about Krishna. We, when we think about Krishna, our mind becomes purified. Man, mana. And how are we going to purify our intelligence? That by hearing about Krishna, by hearing Bhagavad Gita, by hearing Bhagavatam, our intelligence becomes purified. And by making plans in Krishna's service, our intelligence becomes uh, purified. So, again, thinking of Krishna. If we have, we have to put Krishna or constantly in the subtle body, in the mind, and use our intelligence to serve Krishna to he and to uh, act in a way that we always think of Krishna. And we, and we think of Krishna, Krishna is antiseptic. We, our, our mind becomes purified from lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion, envy. So Krishna is the purifier. He is Sudam, pure, and is antiseptic. So always think of Krishna and never forget him. These are the most important instructions. In, in terms of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti is meant to think of Krishna and never forget him. That, uh, so that is a very important instruction. That, uh, and and his aunt is, is prophylactic. What does that mean? Prophylactic 
means it's like it's like a vaccine a vaccine protects you against diseases so if you have krishna in the mind he acts like a vaccine when you think of krishna no new contamination can come in that uh, so that is important we are protected against new contamination when we think of krishna so yes these two things thinking of krishna and that uh, so krishna purifies us he is the purifier when our mind is purified and our intelligence is purified then the false ego stops to exist you act like a, uh, you have become a devotee you act as a devotee of krishna and then the spiritual body is spiritualized the material spirit the material spiritual body is gone you killed it and then we don't take birth again so we have to come to that point purifying our subtle body that uh, and only krishna has these qualities of sudam and apapa vidam that uh, yes that, uh, so there are other qualities discussed in this verse like sukram is omnipotent and Prabhupada explains he can receive an offering everywhere he has everywhere his hands that uh, that yes mm -hmm. and uh, again as in previous uh, uh, purpose Prabhupada speaks about Arshavira Arshavira or the deity form eh, that uh, Srila Prabhupada mentioned is at the same potency as the Supreme Personality of God it. That, uh, because Arshavira is meant to accept our service that we discussed last time that uh, yes that's so uh, we have gone to nearly all the aspects of this purport and now we will start a new section first the new section is mantra 9 that uh, 9 that, uh, just a moment to remove here nine so where are we we covered already the two first sections and now enter the middle section where in three verses right and wrong video will be, will be discussed video knowledge for understanding ishvara that's like I said before, this Shri's Upanishad is enigmatic, puzzling. So we will see in uh, the words Vidya, in Avidya, in verse man, in, in Mantra 9, they have another meaning in verse 10, and also in verse 11. And that... Uh, and so after that we will speak about the next session next week for right and wrong worship that uh, worshiping 
the right worship or the wrong worship sambuti or sambuti and at the end there are the prayers of, to, Ish, to Ishvara to reveal himself so here we have these three mantras and the words avidya and vidya have different meanings in these mantras Avidya in flex 9 means knowledge which is ignorant or the ignorant pursuit, pursuit of sense gratification. It's ordinary that people in this world want sense gratification and can use their intelligence for that, this knowledge. And Vidya in verse 9 means knowledge for pursuing sense gratification like in karma kanda there is in the vedas knowledge of pursuing sense gratification now in text 10 the vidya of text 9 is called avidya in text 10 because knowledge for pursuit of sense gratification that brings us down to the material platform and real vidya is knowledge for progressing in our Krishna consciousness and then in text 11 that's interesting we have two kinds of knowledge knowledge for bodily maintenance and knowledge for pursuit of Krishna consciousness and the verse will say you need both to advance spiritually knowledge for body maintenance and knowledge for pursuit of Krishna consciousness that is interesting anyway if you don't get that right now we will discuss that in each of these verses but you understand the, the puzzling nature of this um, Upanishads it's for intellectuals that avidya and vidya has different meaning, meanings and, and you must find out the meat in the meaning meanings to understand it correctly so in text 9 we will read text 9 first again Andam tama pavishanti ye vidyam upa ye vidyam upashati tato buya ivati tato buya ivati tamo ya u vidyayam rataha andam goes in ignorance tama darkness Pavishanti enter into ye those who avidyam nations upashati worship tattaha dandat buyaha still more eva like te they tamaha darkness ye those who who also vidyayam in the culture of knowledge rataha engaged those who engage in the culture of nascent activities shall enter into the darkness of ignorance. Worse still are those engaged in the culture of so-called knowledge. So those who are engaged in the culture of nascent activity. That, uh, so that's here. And, and those engaged those are still those engaged in the culture of so-called knowledge so here vidya is worse than avidya how can we understand that vidya is worse but uh, avidya yeah avidya in the in this verse means the ignorant pursuit of sense gratification like everyone in this world 
no spiritual goals, but they want sense gratification. And they don't follow the scriptures to do that and so on. And that, uh, and they are, they don't mostly have the proper no knowledge. But those with Vidya, how to get, uh, how to increase one's some sense gratification, it's worse. And we see that in the material world there is a lot of knowledge to increase one's sense, con sense gratification. So many machines, Carl Jung has so, so many machines that uh, cars and airplanes for going on holidays and so many machines. But people, they can control their machines, but due to, to stress, they, they have uncontrolled minds. It has become worse that uh, now so everyone is full of stress in Kali Yuga that uh, because of their vidya for sense gratification it, it has ma made everything worse. So avidyam upashati that uh, Text 9, paragraphs 2. Avidyam Upashati is caused by forgetfulness of the Issa Vasya principle. That uh, not sure. Yeah. The second paragraph. As far as Vidya is concerned, the first mantra is explained very clearly that the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of everything and that forgetfulness of this fact is ignorance. So they, they forget the Isavasya principle. The more a man forgets these facts of life, the more is in darkness. In view of this a godless, directed, a godless civilization directed to so-called advancement of education is more da dangerous than a civilization in which the mass of people are less educated. That, uh, and then we have the vid Vidyayam Rataha. That, uh, vidyayam Rata. That uh, this. Uh, Godless modern education. Irreligious materialist Shila Prabhupada speaks in a purport here at the end of this of, of this uh, Vidya Yamrataha. The Vidya Yamrataha means those engaged in the study of the Vedas. The so-called students of the Vedas are condemned herein because they are ignorant of the actual purpose of the Vedas on account of their obeying the, disobeying the Acharyas. They are following the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, the flowery section of the Vedas to get sense gratification and, and go to the heavenly planets. So. They are ignorant of the actual purpose of the Vedas. The purpose is Sarvashyam Edition Vishta Matashmiti Hyanam Apamsa Vedasa Sarvam Vedya. The purpose of the Vedas is to know Krishna. But, uh, but they are ignorant of that purpose. Such Veda Bhadaratas search out meanings in every word of the Vedas to suit their own purposes. That uh, they do not know the Vedic literature is a collection of extraordinary books that can be understood only through the chain of disciplic succession. So one must approach a bona fide spiritual master in order to understand the transcendental message of the Vedas. 
That is the direction of the Makuna Up Up Upanishad. The Vedavata Rata people, however, have their own Acharyas, who are not in the chain of transcendental succession. Thus they progress in the dark, darkest region of ignorance by misinterpreting the Vedic literature. They fall even further into ignorance than those who have no knowledge of the Vedas at all. And then Srila Prabhupada speaks about the Maya Paritajyan. It's similar to the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where Srila Prabhupada speaks about seven, four pious people who take to Krishna consciousness and four impious people who does not take to Krishna consciousness, who are averse to it. That uh, is the Muda who wo works very, very hard that, uh, for sense gratification. And then the you have the, the the second is the Naradam and the Naradam politically and socially developed but no clue of the goal of life that uh, and then you have the 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 yeah the those who are asuras against the Supreme Lord and the, the Maya Paritajyan that uh, the Maya Paritajyan class of men are self-made gods such men think that they themselves are gods and that there is no need of worshipping any other god they agree to worship an ordinary man if he happens to be rich but they never worship the Supreme Personality of God that uh, such men, unable to recognize their own foolishness, never consider how it is that God can be attracted by Maya. It's only illusory energy. If God ever and, and um, were ever entrapped by Maya, Maya would be more powerful than God. Such men say that God is all powerful, but they do not consider that if He's all powerful, that there is no possibility of His being overpowered by Maya. Just a moment. Up here. Text 9. <coughs> so yes, let's recap what we went through though. That uh, see here at this mantra nine paragraphs five to eight. That uh, paragraphs five to eight. So the Veda Vatarata, that, uh, so the godless modern education, ir irreligious, irreligious materialist. So modern godless education, this is the fourth paragraph of our, of, of, of the mantra, commentary of Srila Prabhupada. To be in ignorance is bad. To be in ignorance and claim to be in knowledge is worse. And Prabhupada says, these are the non-theistic scientists. To be in ignorance and claim to be in knowledge and to condemn real knowledge as ignorance is worse. The atheistic scientist. So the underlying principle of today's technolo techno technological advancement is Avidyam Upashati, Prabhupada says. And then we, we were speaking out about the, 
Veda Vatarata, religious materialists. These are the Kama, Karmakandis. And the Karmakandis, they are described in the Gita. 242-43. It's there where, uh, where Krishna tells Arjun, because uh, Arjun said before, Yes, when I, he gave the arguments for not fighting. He said, when I die on the battlefield, yeah, I will go to hell for killing my relatives. I will not go into heaven. But uh, Krishna says, replies, yes, that, no, the scriptures say, if you die, on the battlefield, we, you go to heaven, heaven, and if you sub win the battlefield, you will enjoy a flourishing king kingdom. But he says, after after that, Krishna Arjun, do not be attached to the flowery language of the Vedas of this going to heaven. That's just be transcendental to it. Don't do that. That uh, so that's in two forty two and forty three, and in in nine twenty and twenty one. In the ninth chapter, Krishna speaks again about this uh, karma kandis, this Veda Vataratas, and there he says yes. The these Karmakandis, they want to go to heaven, they want to to enjoy the Samaras, but they have to come back. It's a, it's a useless endeavor. Why is a useless endeavor? Because that's not the, that, that is not the purpose of the Vedas. They mistake a side is, issue in the Vedas as their ultimate purpose. They misguide people, they misinterpret the Vedas, because they are misguiding people, they are going to the darkest region, regions. They believe in God and religion, but they think that, in, that the, pur the purpose of religion is to, is to provide sense gratification. And we have in Krishna book the stories of the, the, the Brahmins and the wives of the Brahmins. These Brahmins were performing these ritualistic activities, these offerings to go to heaven. And it must be done perfectly, a little error and you don't get the, the result. So all the, all the details of the sacrifice are very important. And then the covered boys came to ask them for food for Krishna and Balaram, and they, they just didn't reply. That, that uh, this, this, go away, this is serious business here. So they were thinking, uh, Krishna and Balaram is a side issue. <laughs> but later they understood their offense. Just this is the fate of Adarata. Then the Maya Paritakyan. So again, this, this is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, four categories of impious people, Namam, Duskitana, Buddha, Pavachyanti, Naradama, Maya Pritakyana, Sram, Pavam, Ashrita. So Maya has stolen their knowledge that of the Maya Vadis. The, the knowledge, most are Maya Vadis, and they claim to be God. The monasts say, that everyone is one. They claim to be God, but Prabhupada in the purpose writes, they uh, cannot explain if they are God, why they came into this world under illusion, <laughs> that God 
go this belt into illusion doesn't make sense but uh, but yes but there are also Brahmavadis they are not Mayavadis Brahmavadis they don't know about Bhagavan and you find this Brahmavadis in the Bhagavatam that the sages came together and they were discussing who is supreme is it Brahma is it Vishnu or is it Shiva and they gave an assignment to Brihu Muni who is the son of Brahma to find out who is supreme so they don't know who is supreme that's some other uh, um, uh, Brahmavadi so the idea that Brahman is the absolute truth Brahmavadis do not know about the Lord and they do not offend the Lord what is offending the Lord? Avajanam Timamuda Manishim Tam Ashvitam Krishna says the, these offenders think that I've become an ordinary human being that uh, they don't know Krishna's nature that uh, so they are not offensive these Brahmavadis they just do not do not know about the Lord there but their spiritual ad advancement is klesha it's very difficult when you don't know Krishna is the goal but the Mayavadis they imagine they yeah so the they imagine Bhagavan to be a temporary manifestation of Brahman of a Janti Mahamuda that the Mayavadis think that the material man, man, manifestation is illusion they imagine that you need to go beyond Bhagavan such people Krishna say all their pursuits are baffled so it gives a disastrous understanding of the Vedas Sanatan Dharma is different it's God's personal descent that uh, so yes so the misconception of materialist and monism materialist mistakes the counterfeit note to be the real counterfeit note is the real <laughs> so they think that the temporary activities the temporary material activities are the essence of life but th so they the, the materialist thinks that the counterfeit note is the real but the monism they think that the real real note is the is the counterfeit note they say eternal spiritual activities are illusion they say that uh, one has to go beyond the lord's pastimes which they consider maya ultimately god has no form and power part at the end of the purport and we read that they cannot answer the question why god becomes under illusion so this is the introduction of mantra nine and uh, so next week we have another nine mantras to discuss so I would leave it by this introduction of mantra 9 for today and if there are any questions please questions and um, we continue Monday yeah mm -hmm. Anandita mm -hmm.
transitional to um, explaining by telling a story the history of the fall down of Shinga the Brahmins so we have that pastime in the first canto Shingi is the son of Shamikarishi and he has become puffed up is uh, a powerful son of a Brahman, but he has become puffed up. So, this Prabhupada explains is the beginning of the fall down of the Brahmins. Because when a Brahman is not humble, then the Kshatriyas cannot stand that. They cannot stand that someone thinks I'm better than you because of their mode of passion. And therefore, they rejected the Brahmins after the fall down of Shing. That, uh, and so they start to act on their own, the Kshatriyas, without guidance of the Brahmins, without guidance of the scriptures. So they were acting according to, uh, to their sense gratification. But the Vaishyas, they were thinking, okay, they are acting now for their sense gratification. So, who is providing the sense gratification? We have the capital. We have the food. We have the wealth. Everything. That, uh, so we will rule and divide with our capital. And favor some chatriya and, and, and disfavor some another one. And that is how capitalism was born. That is capitalism. But that capitalism that uh, everyone has the possibility to use his talents for sense gratification in so many ways that but yes only a few of them get this, the higher sense gratification or the and they are also not happy they are frustrated it leads to frustration but finally this sense gratification it's only a few who get the wealth it was they did a research that's 10 years ago already, but at that time, I think 340 people of the, uh, of the entire world, 340 people owned 50% of all the wealth. That's a problem. The, the, those who do not have have wealth, the laborers, the sudras, they don't agree and they start a revolution 
And that was the beginning of communism. Give the power to the people. The power of the people possesses everything. Let's divide among us. But it also didn't work. Because, because people need a stimuli to use their talents and get a result. But if, if everyone gets the same result, it's divided without, without rewarding their talents. Yes, then it leads. So in that communistic system also, there is a, a privileged group who gets still more. And people remain dissatisfied because they cannot express themselves sufficiently. The, not, the talented are not rewarded frustration. So that is the basis of Srila Prabhupada criticism. Only the Varnashram system, everyone is satisfied. There is no stress. Everyone is engaged according to his nature, so can, can get full satisfaction if, in what one does. And, and the Vaishyas is, are taking care of everyone's food, that's not a problem. The Brahmins, free education, that's not a problem. The Kshatriyas, the, uh, protect everyone, not a problem. And we have, you have a peaceful society. So that's the why that the Vedic model is superior. And that is more or less the, 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 the basis of Prabhupada's criticism on all these social systems, capitalism and, and socialism, communism, it is not perfect. It leads to distress, dissatisfaction at the end. That uh, we can go in details, but that is the basis. Does that help? In both the systems, there were uh, some, uh, there were groups. Uh, in capitalist also, like you said, 340 out of the whole, the, more than 50% of the whole world. So they had also groups, some were rich and some were not rich. And in communism also some were talented and some were not. So in both the uh, systems, there were groups so that uh, due to which they, will, they were not satisfied with the system. Right? Yeah, sure. But uh, anyway, the, it's not that we need to go into a political discussion of that. Yeah, I, the, I, I, I know. The, the, the no. points Prabhupada makes are, are, are very clear. It, it's not, it, Papa does not say that to, to criticize, but to inspire everyone to come to the spiritual standard. Spiritual standard means, Parnashra means satisfied materially and making spiritual advancement. Because you are peaceful, you can make spiritual advancement more easily. That is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mandalish for Pong. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. This Varnasham system is, is, is practical in, in this present condition. Does it work? Yeah. In Kali Yuga, this Varnashram system is, is not there. That's very yeah. clear. But the principles behind we can apply. Acting according to our psychophysical nature that, uh, and going to the ashrams. And we try to apply that in our movement individually that uh, and 
that is that's why Prabhupada part said yeah my my work is unfinished he said that to Bhakti Charamaj at night that then I've done fifty percent of my work the other fifty percent is Parnashram so especially today to protect our society we need to develop that within our society because you see just to get pure water pure air pure food it's not available anymore in this world unless we cultivated ourselves and then the contamination is minimal that uh, so therefore the development of Varnashram is gaining importance for us as Kali Yuga progresses that uh, it just it becomes just a means of survival in the near future for us to have our own farms and our own communities which are self-sustaining the, the because the world becomes really inhabitable habitable in it's mentioned in the 12th canto people will will go to to, to the countryside and escape from this whole system that uh, that, that uh, yes it's different i'm here for the moment in belgium radadish which is in the countryside far far from from the cities and it's very peaceful here in the forest <laughs> that and and you when i'm here i'm recuperating but when you are in the cities and all these things it becomes very difficult you become sick just by the pollution and so on so it's it has its importance to organize a life of uh, simple living and high thinking that's what these are a few points I have understood others may have understood other points <laughs> yes other an Anandita Maharaj, can I ask one more? I'm going to take more questions if you have yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maharaj, um, uh, in NMD, we have just finished this introduction with last week. And uh, here, um, we have that in the 64 limbs of Sarna Bhakti, um, Sri uh, Guru Goswami nowhere has, uh, has nowhere mentioned about. Uh, uh, Varnashrama because uh, and also uh, the reference was given I'm sorry the reference was given uh, of Ramananda Rai also that when he uh, mentioned um, hmm. uh, about Varnashrama Dharam then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also refuted so my question is that um, since uh, NOD is for our practice right for, our, for the devotees we have to practice as per NOD and uh, but there are nowhere when Vanashram is there and um, you also mentioned like uh, we can at least we can change uh, we can um, bring a change in our community that we can do we cannot change the whole world so in our community um, when initially Guru says that uh, every disciple should be engaged as per their psychophysical nature once they are advanced they can be engaged anywhere because they take it, uh, uh, they can do any seva, I mean to say. So, uh, my question is that why uh, Vanashram Dharam, why did Prabhupada say that uh, I have uh, left the work 50% uh, unfinished in terms of Vanashram when it is not given in the sadhana bhakti? That Shureshvar uh, Prabhu. This is 20 years ago. He got by the GBC the mission to find out Prabhupada's viewpoint on Varnashram. And he gave seminars on it, beautiful seminars. But a few things I took away from that. First, in the beginning, he did, he did not give so much importance on 
פרנסם. דת קיים נתח. It came through the years, it gave more and more importance. Why is that? The process given by Rupert Goswami in Act of Devotion, the 64 items, uh, they are, yes, very important, is the basis of our spiritual advancement. That, um, that is true. But Prabhupada saw that especially for the Westerners, it became very difficult to follow. And some fe fell away, some had difficulty to keep up their sadhana. So Varnashram is like, uh, like when you sit in the, the car, you have a safety belt. It's like a safety belt. Because following Varnashram brings one to goodness. From goodness, it's more easier to practice Krishna consciousness. And therefore, he saw that there, there were so many difficulties. And out of compassion, he wanted to get his Varnashram Dharma going on, so that still, if they didn't follow perfectly the sadhana, that they still will be engaged according to Varnashram Dharma and being goodness. So that was... Uh, one concern that uh, another concern that uh, for Prabhupada in this regard certainly was that uh, we also implement Varnashram Varnash, Varnash, Dharma because the devotees need to be engaged according to their psychophysical nature and it's really ideal to do that. It does not mean that if, if we can engage ourselves according to our psychophysical nature under the instruction of a spiritual master, okay. But some will have difficulties to do that. And therefore it's good to create activities for that. I know my spiritual master Bhakti Charumaraj, he wanted all, always to to create businesses, activities for activities, Kovina restaurants, so that they would be busy in a Krishna conscious atmosphere. He wanted that. I must say he was many times not successful, but he didn't give up to pushing that forward. That to, to create a protective env environment for the devotees, because when they work outside, they become entangled more easy and so on. And therefore that is also a reason. Already 20 years ago I was in hung Hungary, Hungarian farm, and it's very nice there. There is no electricity. That And they are, they, they are building, they have, they, they, they created their own own building company for building houses in a small houses and in, in in the middle of the house you have an an Hungarian stove with and but that is with this uh, tiles heating tiles around and they heat it but there is a wall of the heating system in each room so they are eating all, all the rooms and even upstairs with that. It, and that, uh, and uh, they are an, an attending Mangalarti, they have their temple, and the temple roof is made of glass. And uh, from the moment the, there is no electricity, there is, it's also the whole temple is heated with oil lamps in the morning. And, and it gives such a peaceful atmosphere. And then, and then, then but with the first sunlight, the, the temple is full of light, it's so constructed. And it's, it's so peaceful. And they have their own vegetables, they have their own cows, they have their own forest for wood, for heating. Pract practically completely self-sufficient. 
En, en ieder, de, iets dat woont is daar in het departement. En it's so peaceful. That uh, every time I go there, that, uh, yeah. Anyway, that, that is what I could say on Varnashram. A few points I made. How many mo more points Suresh Prabhu made? That, uh, but yes, it's important that, of course, the 64 items of devotional service are more important. But uh, it's like a safety belt. And it's more helpful. It's supporting. It has a supporting function. It, it's still external, but we need some peace to perform and think of Krishna. That, uh, yeah. Good. I hope this helps. Uh, thank you. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, after reading, while reading, I believe this question was uh, really driven that why, why connection. So it was been carried from then to till now, and your answer is so nicely. So the safety belt point I really appreciate. And uh, I think when uh, the community will have those uh, that type of farmhouses, you know, the, on the natural uh, system, then I think the world would come and see that uh, how we, how all can lead without the material advancement. From one thing to yes, so sure. Mm -hmm. uh, all these farm pro projects, also the eco village and so on, they are studied by many people. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Good. I've, I've, I've seen one video recently. I think um, the the Chinaman Swami, I don't have to the name. I'm sure the name of the place also. Uh, there was a community. There was a, there is also a community of 200 people and people. And it, the video was shot by some, you know, um, some news agency. It was not from the Swami. So then they will think that uh, people still can live on the natural systems. Yeah. And I think the world will come forward and. Uh, one more question is there, uh, is that in the Mantra 9, you have shown Vidya and Avidya. Yeah, so, uh, uh, can, you, can you speak a little louder, because I have really difficulty to hear. Okay, okay, just a question. Now? now am I audible? That's much better. Yeah. Sorry. Um, actually, you mentioned in the Mantra 9 about Vidya and uh, Avidya. So, uh, in uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, we have uh, a tutor has explained to us that anything, what, anything of any knowledge of this material world is avidya. Unless uh, that is utilized um, in the service of Krishna, then it becomes vidya. Yeah. Is it, is it right? Yeah. That have I understood the, it that correctly? That will be the meaning in mantra 10, the next mantra. We'll, okay, we'll okay, take that okay. meaning. That's for Monday. Okay, then, okay. Good. Okay, then I will ask yeah. the question. I will ask later then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, Thank, Thank you so have much. Have a good weekend. I'm looking forward to see you on Monday. On Monday, I'm in another place at the Belgian coast, at the North Sea. That, uh, but uh, hopefully everything goes well. And I see you then. Hare Krishna. Jai Prabhupada.